All right, we're live. Good. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'd like to call this meeting to order at 6.06 .06 p.m. I get a mover and a seconder for that. And I can't see anybody. Hold on. Okay, Bob. Bob. And if you can just say your name quick there, because I, I my screen doesn't allow me to see everybody. Peter. Moved by Bob and seconded by Peter. All in favor? Yep. All right. Yes. Okay. Um, adopt, would like to adopt the agenda as presented. I'm going to move her in a seconder. Yeah, problem. Peter and yeah. Brad. Is there any disclosure of pecuniary interests? See none. Uh, I'd like to adopt the, the the minutes from the meeting of June 23rd. Everybody read the minutes? Yep. Okay, I'll get a motion. Peter, move the motion. And Bob. Bob will second it. Item four on the agenda, items for discussion and consideration. We have an information report review of the traffic and parking bylaw 2009-58. And I think, is it Martin or uh, Michelle that will speak on that? I think Martin. Yeah, I can, uh, I can speak on that. Thank you. So uh, the municipality has a traffic and parking bylaw. Uh, the last time this bylaw was uh, reviewed and updated was back in 2017. Uh, it was originally adopted in 2009 and it basically focuses on a lot of our parking and traffic issues, um, such as the parking on the roads and parking by intersections and such like that. The issue with these specific bylaw is that there, after I was going through it and uh, Kevin, the manager of bylaw, uh, we've noticed a lot of discrepancies with a few of the statements. So uh, for everybody who's seen the document in the uh, schedule portion, which is the uh, near the end of the document, we have a lot of uh, missing or misleading information that we'd like to clarify. So since the municipality um, erects these uh, bylaws, we, we got to make sure that they're all up to snuff and constantly update them when we have significant road changes and, and such. So what I'm bringing to the table with this is that we would like to ask the committee to ask council to allow staff to basically do research and update the bylaw as as is we have uh, one of the significant things that we need to look at are our, uh, our intersections, our speeds for certain roads, our parking bylaws. There's a whole lot of things we actually have to look at in the bylaw. And just trying to go over my notes real quick. It's more or less topic of discussion. For this, if anybody had any questions or comments or concerns about the bylaw. Yes, Dean. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I can understand completely uh, the, uh, the need for, for the, what you're asking because times have changed a lot since then, roads have changed and, and the usage of roads has changed uh, over the last uh, few years. And I particularly would like to uh, put emphasis on, on, uh, uh, on having our speed bylaw, our, our maximum speeds on our roads examined. I think that uh, uh, what I would suggest, and I mean, I'd like everybody to have a, something to say on it, but I'd like to suggest that, uh, that staff be asked 
uh, it council asked staff to review the speed limits on different roads because different roads have different uh, capabilities and different speeds and not not suggesting that we go to any uh, 50 click speed or uh, or other uh, 80 click speed limits or anything like that. But I know that some of our roads could have more than a 50 click speed limit and be safe in doing so. And, uh, and I think that we need to change this because nobody is paying much attention to speed limits on a lot of the roads. And I'll use, for example, the Delamere Road. That's a long road of empty miles of road. And I'm very sure that the people that habitually and regularly use that road are not driving at 50 clicks and to have a single speed limit applicable to all the roads in the municipality doesn't make any sense. I mean, even the village of Albin has got a 60 click speed limit going through right through the village with houses close to the road on both sides and so forth. So certainly we could examine ours and I would like to suggest that that in per particular item have some emphasis and, and I for one will be prepared to uh, ask council uh, to ask staff to examine these speed limits on the different roads. Now, some of our roads, 50 clicks could be too much. I mean, we have some pretty small little roads in places, but in many of our roads, 50 clicks is really a little lower than it needs to be. If we, another five clicks or something is, would make the roads more useful and people would be more legally using them. The other issues that uh, that Martin has mentioned, uh, I mean, I'm I think we're those of us that are on council would be glad to bring these issues to council, and I'm glad you're asking it. I think it ought to be a little formal. I think that uh, you you folks would. Uh, I mean, I don't know how do we go about this. Maybe, maybe the chair could uh, uh, could make a suggestion of how we do this or, or make a list of the items that Martin's talking about that she wants those of us on council to bring to council. So. Hey, thank you, Dean. Uh, I, I agree with that. Some some roads could be a little bit faster and some of them it's too fast. 50 for all of them is, is not uh, suitable for all the roads. Um, I'd like uh, Dave, Martin, a you... Oh, sorry. Dave, a question. Yeah. Um, talking of the road through Alban, that's a King's or Queen's Highway, isn't it? Through yeah. the municipality yes. by yeah, laws. No, no, that's what I was thinking. So yeah. we cannot change the speed limit on Highway 64. We can ask. But we could make. We can ask yeah, we, the uh, ministry, yes. Yeah. We've done it in the past, in fact. We've, we've got speed limits that have come about because we made a you know, case to the, to the ministry. We yeah. did ask yeah. from uh, the OPP station up to Noelville to lower that. It, it yeah. hasn't been done yet, but we did, we did make the, the request. Yeah. Okay. Just clarification for me. Martin, I have a, uh, not a question, but can you um, just point out the main differences that, that from the original bylaw to what we're proposing here? Sure. Uh, yeah, the main differences are to review certain speed limits of certain roads. Yep. To, uh, I guess, to be a little bit more broad, it's just basically review the, the schedule section of the bylaw, because there's, there's like... 15 schedules in that section that all kind of need to be reviewed. Okay. Um, that and the uh, parking portion, which is the majority of the bylaw, uh, the bylaw officer has pointed out that we have certain um, sections in the bylaw that states uh, where vehicles can and cannot park, and but we do not have any signage to enforce that. So, um, some things are we can we can enforce because it's in the bylaw, but other things it just says uh, you cannot park where it says don't park. Well, we don't have any signs that say that you can't park there, kind of deal. Okay. I sorry, I believe uh, Brad had a question. Oh, Brad. Uh, I, yeah, thanks, Dave. Um, question or just want to clarify. I think what you're asking us for is a motion that 
bylaw 2958 be sent to or recommend to council that it be sent to staff for review and that's right update. is that right yes so can i can i move that motion yeah public works advisory committee recommends to council that to bylaw parking by traffic and parking bylaw number 2958 be sent to staff for review and should we put a should we put a time on it or what's no, I, don't think so. I don't i don't think we need to put a time okay. on that now if i if i may mr chair sure. oh um sorry if you were going to say something oh that's okay give it oh i was just going to comment on our speed um issue uh so first and foremost just to let everybody know because dean had mentioned uh, five clicks or so uh, it's in the Ontario Traffic Act that you that all Ontario traffic has to be uh, in multiples of 10. So you won't find a 65 kilometer an hour sign anywhere in Ontario. It's against the law. Um, that's just a, a fun fact. Uh, but for our roads, so one of the major issues we have with the roads, so like um, Councillor Dean was saying about the driving at certain speeds, when a road is marked at a certain mileage or kilometers per hour. The easiest way to do it is put your car on cruise at 50 kilometers an hour and see if you can drive the whole road like that. So when you're looking at things like Delamere or Hool or Mayi, uh, they're one long road. So you can definitely do that at 50, no problem. But when you're looking at our smaller, windier roads, such as Sedgwick, Plouffe, um, Ash Bay, like just the windy ones, you, you can't put your car on cruise at 50. It's just not going to, it's not going to go well. So what some places do is basically if you have one corner, you'll put a, a, cor a corner approaching sign, uh, one of the yellow warning signs with a certain speed, recommended speed limit for that corner, which makes sense. The only issue is if you have a, a road that's windy everywhere, you're not going to put a, a sign around every single corner. That just doesn't make sense. So that's that's my uh, my opinion on that. Oh, um, unless someone has to add on to that topic, I do have another thing to say about intersections. We've uh, had a couple of our roads greatly in, um, what's around for Re rehabilitated. So such as Dry Pine Bay Road, uh, White Pine Lane, and we have a couple intersections that need to be reviewed. Um, mainly we have six, I should have drawn up a diagram and showed you, but uh, we have six intersections that I have considerable issues with. Um, they're basically T intersections, but they're not treated as a T intersection. So one major example is Dry Pine Bay Road and Whippoorwill. So where Dry Pine Bay is a continuous road and Whippoorwill joins in on the T, well, we have issues with traffic just, you approach the intersection and it doesn't feel right when you're speeding down around the corner and someone's else at a stop sign or somebody forgets they're at a stop sign and it's just not great. Another issue we have is Sedgwick and Heritage River, which is a blind corner. And we have Golf Course Road and Riverview Road. It's another blind corner T intersection. And if you're not paying attention, basically, it's hard to draw it with my hands. And basically, what ends up happening is if you're coming up one way and you want to make a left and the other car wants to go straight, you can't see each other at the intersection and you might collide. So we got to start putting these into our bylaws and changing those intersections for safety reasons. Changing them how, Martin? For example, uh, my suggestion is just make them a three-way stop. It's the easiest way to just alleviate the entire problem. Even if people yield and they don't do a full stop, it'll just, it'll get rid of that problem altogether. Also, uh, Martin, I think Dean mentioned this before, the entrance of uh, dry, dry pine. When you're coming off the 607, you, you can't see turning in left or yes. you can't see the traffic coming in. Yeah, we, we've another. spoken to the MTO about that many times. I think we should take a stronger stance. That's a dangerous, dangerous situation there. It is. 
which is kind of the same as uh, golf course road going into Riverview. If you're coming in from the 607 side, turning left into a, into a Riverview, yeah. that's a bad spot too. You can't see anybody coming the other way. Some of the, some of the roads we have, we're lucky where it's crown land and we can come in and cut those trees and remove those obstructions. But the other issue is sometimes where we have people who own the property and we got to hunt down the people. We had a, an issue on, well, it wasn't an issue, but on, Manetteville Road, we have a big corner just going up towards Forest Hill. Uh, we were able to contact the owner of that corner and we ended up just clear cutting that whole corner. So now you have a nice, beautiful view, no issues. You won't, you won't get into an accident. Which, which makes me think, Martin, that uh, uh, we'll take, go to council and say, we want council to ask staff to do a review on these issues. <laughs> You have a better idea than we do on a lot of the roads because you see them more and so forth. You make the suggestions as to what you want done. You could even bring it back to this committee and see how we react to it. And then we can make recommendations, yes or no, to council on it. But I think it's up to you and your, and your people at staff to actually make recommendations on particularly the, the intersections and the roads where there are issues with both there's a speed and so forth. So, I mean, that, that seems to me, I don't, I could make suggestions on some roads that I'm familiar with, but I don't think it's my thing to do that. I'll comment after you've made yours, but <laughs> I'd rather have staff do that. I think, yes, I think Dean, what, we're, what we're doing here, Dean, I think is just um, asking council to ask staff to to do that review exactly so we can we can, i think we can go ahead with this and then and then ask staff to go ahead with that review and that, and then it'll come back to council after maybe and maybe we come back to committee first okay. i think bob, the bob had a question yes mr chair yeah, go ahead bob yeah just uh I know Brad uh, moved it already. Did you already get a seconder? And uh, no, I was going to wait motion? until uh, all the questions and comments were done. I didn't. I didn't get a seconder yet. No. Uh, I'll so I'll second it. Okay. If uh, nobody else has any more questions or comments, we'll move along with this. Yeah, I have one. Um, yeah. The corner that you were just talking about where you clear cut the trees is a maintenance order going into any uh, maintenance program so that in four years time you recut those That's not just a, a one-shot deal um at this moment it's all in my head we know that we've brushed that road and uh, we have the brush that comes around uh, we're just about done our full municipal cycle. So mm -hmm. basically once that part starts growing back again, we will get the brusher to go in and cut up that section once again. Yeah. Could be something like hydro, I suppose, where they, I think once every eight years, they, they cut all the brush underneath the hydro lines. Whether think, we could have something the same. Yeah, the thing with at least what I found very lucky with our municipality is that we're a large municipality, but we're not that large. So we we yeah. kind of have a memory and a handle on our roads. Yeah, the only thing is um, we don't know who will be in charge of maintenance in yeah. X years time. Yeah, so it's just a, a memory <laughs> jogger included in the program. It'll probably still be Bob. I don't see him leaving anytime soon. Good. <laughs> okay. <coughs> comment, comment made. Do we have any more questions or comments on this subject? Seeing none. All in favor of uh, okay. okay. Yep. So be it resolved that the Public Works and Advisory Committee recommends to Council to direct staff to review and provide recommendations to update bylaw 2009-58. All in favor? Sorry, I did that a little quick. 
Us. Okay. Uh, item 4.2. We have an update on the speed reports and costing for alternative devices to collect road user data. Is this uh, Michelle or is this still Martin? Tell me. All right. So um, we were looking at alternative pricing and speed reports um, traffic counter kind of deal. We have currently purchased a, it's called an ICOMS One Safe. It is lo currently located on Dry Pine Bay Road. And when you drive by, it gives you a flash of your speed and uh, tells you how fast you're going. These devices are good for speed deterrent. Uh, it keeps track of number of cars that went by and the speed that that car went by. Uh, what's good about it is that a lot of people will see it, you drive by and you're like, oh, they're going to get me. So a lot of people slow down, which is good to, to keep the speed lower where we want to. So I know on Dry Pine Bay, there's a lot of speeding. Uh, it's a nice big stretch of the way, very flat, and very straight. So we chose to put it there. The only issue with the design is it's very large and bulky and it requires a lot of manpower to actually move this thing. So this summer we were pretty occupied digging up culverts and ditching and a bunch of other things. And we didn't have the manpower or the time to actually move the device to a different road this year. So what the public works department is looking at is smaller devices and traffic counters. So two things, uh, traffic counters and speed counters. So the one thing that we would like to see is just a plain traffic counter like the MTO uses, just the, the strip, uh, cars drive over it, it counts the cars. That basically helps us know our average daily count. And so we would know if the speed limit is appropriate for the amount of cars that are there, are the signage appropriate for the amount of vehicles using these roads? That's what that would be used for. Um, the other thing we're looking at is, we're looking at a thing called the Black Cat. And the MTO currently uses this system. It is a speed and car counter. It's the same as the, the one that we have, except there are um, hidden. So it's just a little black box. You put it, attach it to a tree and it counts the cars that go by and it counts the speed. So what I like about that is that you can see the actual speed of the vehicles. So instead of somebody being like, oh, I don't want to drive 70 because the car is going to, the counter is going to get me. They drive 70 and you can actually see how many cars are speeding or the, the general speed of traffic or what do you call that? The, uh, I'm losing my train of thought here. The, uh, the, the speed of traffic. So <laughs> It would actually give you a good indication of if we should increase the speed or lower the speed of a certain road. Those unfortunately are $5,000 each, but they are very useful in collecting data. It's the one thing that I find we're lacking in French River is the uh, going into the 21st century and actually collecting a lot more data Right now, it's a lot of uh, reactive maintenance, and we're doing a lot of planning now. There's still a lot of data that we're not collecting, and uh, we could be using to good use. And that's my presentation. Yes, so, Peter. Okay, the, the okay. black cat. The black cat. Yes. Um, does it require hydro? Uh, Actually, give me one. I think it's a battery. Give me one second here. I have the specs here somewhere. I'm just online now. It looks like it's pits battery operated and it's 10 days, 10 days of operation with the battery. I have a spare battery. How about it's going to cost extra just in the operation of it? Comes with a spare battery. Yeah. But somebody has got to go out and replace it. Yes. Yeah. If you don't mind, That's I can right. actually. I'll share my screen and show you, we actually have data for um, Albin and Highway 64 from the OPP that shows basically what we could get off of this data. Wait, one mm -hmm. second here, and we'll share this. Just... 
Let me know when you can see it. Yep. yep. Yes. Perfect. So here we have our Highway 64. So this, I believe, was just coming into Albin from La Haye Lumber, I believe. So it has a breakdown. This was from, sorry, I'm just going to get the dates here. <laughs> May 27th of June 2nd. So it was there for a week. And it actually give you like all the times, the amount of vehicles. So your, your volumes in kilometers per hour. So we had, uh, what do we got? Every car that went over 65 kilometers an hour. So here's our count. So a lot of vehicles speeding at noon and then speeding at six o'clock. Everybody wants to go home. And then, oh, geez, look at that Friday. We got over 90 cars speeding, wanted to either go to camp or coming home, whatever it is. So this is one graph that, uh, sorry, I'm going quickly. Uh, this is one graph that we got. Uh, here, let me pull up another one. We got data by hours. So here we have, uh, here's all your speeds. So we got increments of five kilometers per hour. And then we have the amount of vehicles within that hour. So on May 27th at 11 a.m., uh, we only had five car, oh, no, sorry, 10 cars actually going the speed limit. Oh, no, sorry, it goes at 60 kilometers an hour. So we're looking at this road, and then we have all of these guys speeding. But the majority of the traffic's going at 61 to 65. So they're following the, basically the rules. But you can also see sometimes somebody likes to set the high score at 90 kilometers an hour in a 60 zone. Oh, what do we got here? Yeah, almost 100 kilometers an hour. So it's interesting to see, because we can also see how many vehicles we get at a certain time. So we'll notice at two o'clock, looks like we get more vehicles here. It's, it'll be nice to see um, not just daily counts, but yearly counts. So when you're looking at things like, uh, do we get more vehicles during the summer compared to the winter? Well, we know that for a fact, but we don't have that data to prove that. Um, we could also have one of these at our landfill and figure out how many vehicles are coming in and out of the landfill, um, or even the bin sites, how many vehicles are using our bin sites, so, stuff like that. Let's go. Uh, unfortunately, again, these are fairly expensive, but I think, uh, we could use that data to good use. Martin, it's Dean. What would you do with the back data? What would I do with that data? Well, if I look at this data in front of me, so we say the May 29th, I can see my speeds. Again, I'm just eyeballing this real quick. This looks like the median here. So 60 kilometers an hour. This is what everybody's driving. It's the speed limit. It's the highway. But you can also notice that a lot. Sorry, I'm getting too much here. You can go from 60 to 70 is basically our median in the 60 zone. So on our back roads that aren't usually enforced by the OPP, we could actually see that, oh, well, the speed, posted speed limit is 50 kilometers an hour, but the majority of the traffic is going 60, 70 kilometers an hour. Well, if that's the case, if the majority is driving that fast, maybe it, it's safe to drive at that speed. Because <clears throat> typically, I don't know about you, but when I drive, I drive to what it feels comfortable when you're driving. So if you're on a windy road and I'm only driving 30, well, it's because that's what I feel comfortable driving at. So maybe based off of those speeds, we can actually drop our, our speed or increase our speed. And we can actually get a better understanding of how many people drive those speeds at those times. Because I'm sure a lot of people forget that Serenity Bay, which is at the other end of Whitetail at the other end of Blue Jay is 50 kilometers an hour. Like you just drive down all these back roads, people forget what the speeds are and they just kind of drive what they want. But a lot of the times they drive what they feel is comfortable. Yeah. Um, I think that we had another thing of data here. I'll just hit double check. No, if my, oh, it's not open. This enforcement evaluator. This is interesting. So here's our, everybody, 
All right. Everybody who's not speeding, everybody who's kind of speeding, and everybody who's really speeding. So I guess the OPP uses this to basically say, hey, if this was majority red, we would enforce it more often. But direction one, low, direction two. Interesting. So then basically we can use this data here, send it to the OPP and say, hey, um, make it up. Pool road is 50 kilometers an hour. Everybody majority is driving 80 kilometers an hour. Well, maybe we don't want traffic to drive that fast. We'll send it through the OPP, ask them to patrol more often, stuff like that. So I guess what I'm asking for is I'm asking the committee to ask to put a motion through to ask council to review and potentially purchase these devices or maybe not this specific device but to get us there to actually get um, some data I'm sure maybe uh Maybe Martin, what we can do is uh, make a recommendation to council to look into one of these items to, to mm -hmm. try it out, test it out, see yeah. what it gives us, what kind of information, if it does us any good, start with one or maybe like one of each because you were telling, you were saying uh, that the counter there, the car counter. Mm -hmm. um, is, is that uh, something? That sounds good or? Yes, yeah. Start with one. Do we have a motion for that or? Uh, we can make one. <laughs> <Free anyone. laughs> yeah. We'll put Michelle Dave. on the spot. Okay. <laughs> oh, Peter, sorry, Michelle, that, did you have something to say, Peter? Okay, just a moment. Um, there's no way of tying in uh, vehicles uh, such as the fire, police, ambulance with those charts, is there? So we need to do uh, somehow or other find out that one doing 99 kilometers an hour was uh, ambulance. Yeah, what not that I know of. About that? I don't think an ambulance Sorry? is allowed to go 90 kilometers an hour in the 50. Well, they come down past my place fairly fast. <laughs> but, but really, that's an anomaly in the, in the data. Like, we're looking at thousands of data points as, as a single fire and truck, not, single ambulance, single ambulance going to uh, the fire the trucks. Is, yeah, it's not a single fire truck. You usually get three or four going yeah, past. Fire trucks, fire trucks aren't, they're not doing 90K either. Not even on the highway. They're too heavy. But I those think are the big ones. Well, I think that that's just a data skew. That's just a minor blip in the data. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You just take a percentage. Say okay. Make a huge difference. On Total the number. Okay. Okay. Is there any more uh, comments or questions? So you need you need a motion, Mr. Chair. Yes, Michelle will. Give us a motion here. Okay. Um, yes, it resolved that the Chair. public works. Oh, oh sorry. Oh, go ahead. Was, that, uh, was that Bob, I think? Yes, yes I was just going to suggest if uh, budget wise uh, we can't do it uh, this year, that uh, we, uh, we, uh, we push that uh, it be put in next year's budget. Yeah, I don't think this would be done this year anyway, but we can I, make I, I a don't think recommendation a this year and uh, have, have staff look into it and come back to us with that. Okay, I, I'll read the resolution. Yes, thank you, sorry. <laughs> uh, be it resolved that the Public Works Advisory Committee recommends to council um, to consider the purchase of a row data collection device. So moved, Brad. Brad moves. And can I get a seconder? Yeah, yeah. no Peter? problem. Okay. Yeah. All in favor? Yep. Yeah. Okay, carried.
Uh, next item on the agenda is 4.3, the round table discussion. I don't really have anything today to bring up. Does anybody have uh, something they want to discuss? Yes, Mr. Chair. Bob, yeah, go ahead. It's Bob, yeah. On the weekend, I was on Heritage Bay Road, just uh, going east past, uh, uh, I just drew a blank on the, the manufacturing business there. Just going Real down the hill. The H? I, Real Coke. Coke. Uh, Real Coke. Real sorry. Coke. Real Coke. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, that, that hill seems to be paved or hard surface in the middle, but it seems that it's not wide enough that with all the rain we have, that it was washed out on each side. And I, uh, I met a vehicle and he, he was in the ruts and I was in the ruts and it seemed that, I don't know if we could uh, widen that a little bit or, 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 or just keep it in our thoughts. Uh, and maybe Martin could uh, comment on it. Of course, uh, through you, Mr. Chair. Um, Heritage River Road, is one of those roads that we have that is half good and half bad. So it is, it does have significant issues with that hill and the low lying area. It gets a lot of ruts during the spring. It is a project that I would like to fix should budget allow it next year. Um, that's kind of our issue right now is just trying to play with the roads and the budget and see what we can fix and what we can't fix. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a known issue that we, we know, um, unfortunately, okay. it all depends what thank, comes on. Thank you, Martin. Thank you. Yeah. Martin, are you talking about a capital project or just good maintenance on it? That one, that one could be done through operations, operational budget, or we could put in a capital. It's not a big job. It's just a job that we need to find time to do. That's that's kind of our main issue. So uh, the hill doesn't have any ditching. So it ruts, the rainwater goes through the middle of the road, rips up the sides, and then it gets all the way down to the bottom. And you got a good, probably about a hundred meters worth of low lying area that we would need to raise. So I'd say it would cost about $30,000 to probably fix that properly. And when you're playing around, I believe our budget is something along the lines of $150,000. So a fifth of our budget going into that, it's, I'm not saying we won't do it. I'm just saying it's, it, it takes up a big chunk of our, of our, of our operation mm -hmm. budget. And didn't I'm trying we, to get. Martin, didn't we just do uh, capital work on Heritage River Road or was it just the first part of that? We did first part, but that was also operational. We ripped up the uh, the surface treatment that was there a couple of years ago because it was yeah. done. And that's one of the things that we'd like to fix. We'd like to put put a lift down, fix the ditching. But again, it's at that stage where it can live as it is for now because we have a lot of roads that are you can barely drive on them as is. So I'm trying to focus our attention on the really bad roads and. According to my 10 year road plan, I believe Heritage is about six or seven years out. So I know a lot of people are upset that they, that they lost their surface treatment, but we, we will be getting there one day. Mm -hmm. One day. You can only do one at a time. That's it. Any other comments, concerns about our local roads? Any improvements you'd like to see? I still had a lot of complaints about dust this year. Even even with the calcium down, I still had a lot of, I don't know what, what the problem is, uh, if it's not a good product or maybe the rain washed it away, but I'm still getting a lot of comments on the dust. And I know we've been putting the from calcium. The, from the public works 
uh, point of view based on the amount of calls that we got. We actually got a lot less calls than last year, but that's us. I don't like if they went to you directly, we wouldn't have got that. The I know a couple of the roads were North Channel, um, Monte Guerin, and Dry Pine Bay, but those were all relatively fresh lays of gravel. So I think basically mm -hmm. we would have to put either more calcium down on the fresh stuff or come up with a, a another solution water trucks whatever it is to keep that dust down but all the the roads that have been compacted over many years have been relatively good this year i know we put a little bit more calcium than what we usually do and it actually it helped the roads a lot it's actually north channel and montegate any of the ones that i got the most comments <laughs> of yeah. maybe what we can look at is when we when we do a fresh road to have extra calcium put on there and on the fresh gravel for for future so in the past when we redid a road so when you look at things like uh, north channel a couple of years ago we had the contractor put down uh, bags of calcium so just flakes everywhere but this year especially for prevo we're looking at getting a, a tanker uh, for the road like we'll just drown it and hopefully that'll keep the road nice and binded and uh, keep the cal uh, the dust down for the next year. Mm -hmm. Okay. I believe Brad, just, just, just a thought, uh, Mr. Chair. What if we were to tender the, the surface treatment earlier, like in the fall, so that they're here earlier in the spring and avoid the dust and the roads that have been rebuilt? Because, I mean, I lived with that all year, but the, my problem was when they calcium leger, they only did the bend. The straight stretches weren't done. And that's where people are picking up the speed. I watched okay. them do it, Martin. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's news to me. Um, you, you, can, you can actually still go. Well, no, now they sur surface treated it this week. Yeah. Um, but you could still see where the calcium was in the gravel and where it okay. wasn't right up until last week. I meant to. I meant to call you this summer about that. But could we not tender the road, the surface treatment early, and get them here in the spring versus the fall? So I know last year when we did Whippoorwill, it was kind of a, not to say a last minute decision. That was kind of at the end of the year we got it to go. This year we had our, our tender out uh, as soon as budget was prepared. So March twenty fifth, whatever it was, we had the went out to tender. Um, it got awarded, I believe first, second week of April, and it took them like five, six months to finally get out here, which is very disappointing. I don't know. It's the contractor schedule. Like we went out as early as we possibly could and it still okay. took until October to get it done. Yep. All right. That's fine. So I, when I saw that, when I saw the calcium truck this year, I thought, why don't we just put hard surface treatment down and get a, make this go away? <laughs> Can we not put a, a, a preferred uh, timeline on a tender that's going out for that sort of work? Uh, I would think that would be possible. I, I, I also do know, though, that, uh, and I think Martin is the one who really likes this, is that we uh, prepare the roads one year, and usually in the fall or late summer, and uh, like to have close to a year uh, of compaction before uh, we hard surface them. Uh, maybe you'd like to expand on that one way or the other, Martin? I don't, I don't mind the, it doesn't have to be a full 12 months. I do like the winter, uh, all the snow, the big trucks compacting the ground very good when it comes to that. Uh, so it doesn't have to be a full 12 months, but yeah, if we finish, so what did we do this year? We're, the, there's no plans on resurfacing Prévost, or actually, uh, if you look at La Brasse. So we finished La Brasse in June, I believe. So we have plans to resurface that. So I don't mind if the surface truck came out next year in early May. So only 11 months. Like I don't, I don't really look at the whole 12 month kind of deal, but as long as it's sat for a long period of time, that's what will really help the road. Yeah, the, the winter is what's going to make the biggest difference. Yes. But I do, I, I just kind of want to point out to the, uh, the table discussion. The last uh, couple of years, we've done major road work on a lot of our roads. So specifically Dry Pine Bay, Whippoorwill, uh, Léger Prévost. What else did we do? Uh, a couple of other roads. Uh, 
Nice skill. Nice skill. Yeah. Uh, when you look at um, the last week that we had, we had it poured every single day for a whole week. And if you drive down some of our dirt roads, they're in pretty bad shape. But all the roads that we put the money in, I didn't see a single rut in those roads. I know Drive Pine Bay had a couple potholes here and there, but compared to our other roads, like um, Dean would have seen White Pine Lane was immaculate. Uh, Pine Ridge was beautiful. Pesquille, Leger, there was not a problem with those roads, even after the immense torrents of rain that we got. So I just want to point out that we're putting the money where it, where, where, it, where it's going and it's, uh, we're putting it where it's needed and it's doing a great job. Well, I'll second that, Martin. There's no doubt about it that the kind of work that's done in our prep work before we do this hard servicing, it really pays off. And as you say, you could see it just in how they, well they held up with heavy rain. Mm -hmm. Ditching is everything, culverts and ditching and that gets rid of the water. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Dean, just to touch on your uh, comment about uh, putting uh, a deadline on, on tenders. Yeah. We can, we can certainly put a, a deadline um, that might def deter some contractors from bidding on it, though. Mm -hmm. If we say it has to be done by, by mid August, some contractors might just say they, don't, they won't even bid on the job. So. Well, I, I understand. I didn't know whether that would be the case or not. It, 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 I, I, maybe there's a way, Bob, that uh, we could put uh, an incentive in the contract to have it done by a certain time. And, and I don't know whether it could be anything other than financial, but, but uh, that's something you might, uh, we might talk about or think about if it's, a, if it's a, a real importance. I, I mean, we were all the people on Dry Pine Bay Road kept asking me, when are we going to get a hard serving? They were anxious to see it starting the end of April <laughs> before the frost was out of the ground. But in any event, uh, uh, they, were, they did wait and they waited patiently and everybody will be absolutely delighted with what's happening right now. So, mm -hmm. so, so maybe the next time we put a tender out, we'll, uh, we'll clarify that with the, uh, the treasurer to make sure that that's something we can put in there to to not bind us in any way. Yeah, well, just That's a matter of, of interest. I, I personally, my personal thought is it's just as well to wait till the end of the summer. It gives that longer period of time for compaction in the summer with summer rains and everything. And, and, uh, and uh, maybe we end up with a better job in the long run, but well, here it is now, they're almost October before they're doing ours. But I talked to some of the people here in Miller Paving that are doing our work and uh, believe me, they do work from the Winnipeg border all through Southern Ontario. They do it everywhere. Uh, they're a busy, busy outfit. So I don't know how they uh, determine where they're gonna be, except they probably move their equipment to certain areas and work that area over and then move it to another area. They got a lot of heavy equipment here. Just to comment on the uh, surface treatment, so I don't know if anybody had the, the chance to go check out the uh, service treatment that we just performed. So if you want to go check out Le Jeune Presqu'il, uh, Dry Pine Bay is going to be done tomorrow. Uh, it looks like dirt and gravel. It doesn't look like anything's been done, but there's a, a layer of tar underneath all that. So it eventually it'll harden up and it'll compact real nice and it, it, it stays together. So it'll help with the dust and help with the well, shouldn't be any washboards or potholes. So I've already got a few complaints saying how we destroyed the road and the road isn't as good as it used to be. And I had to keep telling people, wait, it's not the final product. You got to wait for it to compact, you got to wait for it to dry. Um, but uh, one of the things I did notice was we did Whippoorwill last year and I've gotten two complaints about Whippoorwill saying how bad the road is and when are we going to surface treat it? And it's like, one, the road is beautiful. And two, uh, we did that last year. So a lot of people don't see the surface treatment because it does look like gravel. Um, it'll, it'll get gray over time and it'll look like the stuff that we have on most of our roads, but right off the hop, it kind of just looks like regular gravel. So a lot of people are complaining like, when's this getting done? It's like, it, it was done <laughs> last year. 
Did you get those complaints lately about Whip or Will? Because I was on there today and it, it looks fine. Yeah, I know. Uh, I got two of them, one during at the end of the summer and another one a couple of weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Because uh, we sent out letters stating that we were paving paving um, dry pine and uh, white pine and all that. So I sent them all to Whip or Will as well because they're, they drive off the dry pine. Yeah. So they're like, well, when is when was Whipper Will getting done? I was like, yeah, it was done. Like in service tree. Yeah, it looks good. Some can't make some people happy. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's just it. They want to see black asphalt right away after we do the road, and it's like that's not how that works. Uh, that's, that's how you get the Whipper Will is pretty compacted. Oh yeah, it, it's it's solid. It can take up to a month to get it really looking like pavement here, depending on how much traffic we have. I think the weather has something to do with it too. The hotter it is, the more the tar, the more the gravel will sink into the tar. Mm-hmm. So I think on back to Dean's point, doing it this time of year may, might not be the best thing for it, but if, if we don't have a choice, that's... That's what we got. Mm-hmm. Well, we're we're at that time of year where the mornings are cold but the afternoons are warm so should be should yeah. be all right. Do we have any other questions, comments? Quick one. Questions? Quick one here, Dave. Yep. Yeah. Uh, uh, Pine Beach Road. Pine, Pine Beach Road. Road has recently been maintained. Um is it normal just to fill half the potholes? Um, I would have to see the okay. pothole to uh, judge that. Um, I know I did not do that today. Um, I did pothole patching oh, was, on Monday. <laughs> it was done this week. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I'll definitely Could take a look. Please, yeah. please have a look at it. It is not, yeah. not usually the far, half end, the far end. Yeah. No, yeah. Which, which end of the yeah. far end? It's a steep hill. Okay. Yeah. Down, down there, down towards the OPP house, as it's known locally. I'll, I'll definitely go take a look. Yeah, you, you, there's a bus terminal down there, or uh, turnaround down there. Mm-hmm. But have a look, please. Uh, yeah, I'll keep quiet until. Uh, until we talk more. All right. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead, Dean. Uh, Mr. Chair, just a comment that I'd like to make. A, 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 I would imagine that it, the uh, what I'm going to say is applicable to a lot of the municipality, but we had on, on Dry Pine Bay Road and White Pine Lane and Pine Ridge Drive and Whippoorwill Road, a lot more traffic this year than ever before. I mean, I'm talking about the whole year too, because so many people are now living here who didn't spend year round here. Uh, the cottages were occupied steadily. COVID, of course, was, uh, I suppose, one of the big reasons. But I, I have a feeling that we're going to see a lot of these people after experimenting for a year or two of a different kind of lifestyle, that we're going to see a lot more of them here more of the year every year from now on. And uh, so we're going to see more traffic on our roads and, and uh, we uh, will have to expect that, I think. And, and, uh, and, the, and, the, and the work on the road uh, uh, is more important than ever, uh, especially the high volume waterfront property roads. I mean, our roads that service waterfront, like Turin Road too, will, and it could go on naming others, they get the tremendous amount of traffic. And, uh, and, and I think that um, probably Martin's uh, road plan addresses that too, that uh, waterfront property uh, uh, roads get so much more traffic than some of our smaller back roads that don't get as much. But in any event, it's something to keep in mind as we're uh, thinking ahead and looking ahead at road maintenance. And, and it will be interesting for all of us perhaps to once again review uh, Martin's 10-year plan to see where he's thinking the need is going to be. And I know he bases his need not just on r- traffic volume, but he bases the need on what kind of conditions the roads are in too. But the, all of these factors really come into play. But 
I'm sure that everyone has noticed a much greater volume of traffic on the roads this year. I can't drive out of Dry Pine Bay Road to 607 without encountering two or three vehicles the other direction every time I go out. And believe me, in my 73 years here on Dry Pine Bay Road, I remember when you could drive for a year in another seat and too many cars on the road. Things have really changed. I'll leave it at that. I think to, to, to your point, Dean, the, that the data collector that, that uh, Martin was uh, recommending there, I think that would give a lot of data that could be used in, in that 10-year uh, plan. Probably oh, yeah. be a big help. Mm -hmm. Martin? The other thing too is based on those numbers. So for those of you who don't know, the uh, minimum maintenance standards is what the public works follows for um, how we maintain our roads. It's the, uh, the minimum maintenance standards. <laughs> it's basically everything what it says. Um, so based on the classification of road, so a classification of road is based on the number of vehicles traveled on that roadway and the speed of that road. So the more vehicles, the faster the speed, the, the smaller the road. The, so a number one road is like a super massive priority road. Uh, two, three, four are all very high. And then five, all of our roads currently are class five or class six. So class six is uh, you, just your camp road. So um, a good example would be the far, where, where, where Dean lives. Uh, would be a class six road, just that one section. You have two houses back there. You have no traffic. Uh, class five road is all of the all the roads that we have now. So any road, I believe, that has less than four hundred cars a day and less than fifty kilometers an hour. So since all of our roads are fifty kilometers an hour, that's what our road. So basically, those standards are: we have to patrol the road once a month. Uh, if we get a uh, somebody calls for a pothole. Uh, we have a month to actually patch that, that pothole. Um, there's a couple other um, rules to that, uh, washouts and stuff like that. The general rule of thumb is we have a month to fix it. So if you're looking at getting additional data, so we're going to say Dry Pine Bay, uh, and we find out that 1,000 cars travel at a day. I, I don't know. I'm making up a number. Uh, well, at 50 kilometers an hour, that might be a class four road. So we'd have to actually patrol that twice a month we have to repair potholes faster because more we there since there's more vehicles that go down it we have to we have to maintain those roads at a faster time so it'd be it'd be good to know with that kind of data that we sh should be following the minimum maintenance standards based off of our numbers right now that's what we have so we could class our roads a little bit more specifically yeah I think that would be useful too, because we have mm -hmm. all classes of roads in the municipality. We do. And, and I'm not even sure that we should always be using classifications that are designed by MTO for roads that aren't very, for very rural municipalities with a large geography. I mean, I mean, I think it would be more worthwhile for us to do our own classification of our own roads. Mm -hmm. And based on what we know the usage is or what we're going to find out the usage is and, uh, and, 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 and the condition of the roads. I mean, I think, Martin, it would be fair to say that you're already doing a lot of that. When you'd make up that 10-year road plan, you're assigning priorities to particular roads for particular reasons. Yes. Am I not right with that? When I, when I picked the, uh, the, the five-year road plan, it's very much, it's a big puzzle. But uh, primarily, I focus on traffic count, uh, houses, properties, condition of the road, uh, how many roads are within its vicinity. So um, I believe next year, the year after, we have Gene Street. Well, Woodville is, is attached to Gene Street. So they both do both. I'm not just going to do one and not the other kind of deal. So and then you're also looking at not to say favoritism, but you're looking at the differences between Noelville and Albin and Manetteville. So I don't want to put all my attention in one, one town either. So it's one big puzzle. 
Uh, I also try to do one large project a year. So this year was Prevost and that I think it was about $280,000. You're so looking at about half our budget. So I'm trying to do one large road a year. So it's, and then you're looking at, well, we're surface treating every other year. And then we got to, <laughs> so it's, it's fun times. Um, Sorry, I just thought of something uh, just based on uh, what uh, Dean had said. Um, I don't remember where I seen that. We actually have a policy or a bylaw, I forget which one it is, I have to find it, that states that all of our, <laughs> it's kind of funny because uh, this was based on our last uh, road assessment and before the minimum maintenance standards had changed, but uh, basically, in one of our policies, it states that all class four roads within the municipality should be surface treated and all class five and higher roads should be gravel. So based off of that policy, I forget again, if it's a policy or procedure, I'd have to find it. Um, but technically, we'd have to rip up like 90% of our roads and then we'd have to pave a bunch of roads that aren't paved. So um, Maybe, I don't know if we can bring that to a motion or something to review that bylaw to update that, or I'd have to find it. I don't remember which document I've seen that in. Yeah, bring it back maybe, to us, Martin. Maybe yeah. you can yeah. go for the next uh, committee meeting and you can go from there on that. Yeah, because um, the last minimum maintenance standards, I believe it was any, any road that was over 200 vehicles at 50 kilometers an hour was a class four road and then they changed it to over 400. So I know we had a couple of roads that were really close like Suren, uh, Dry Pine Bay, which were like basically 200 vehicles a day. But then when they up, upped it to like 500, it was like, well, it's a no brainer that there's not that much traffic on those roads. It, it bumps up at 2000 vehicles a day. Oh, there it is. Yeah, it's, it's huge. Like it's not even close. Go to, from four to five. Yeah. So, so, so I mean, for now, how, how are you doing a traffic count right now? Right now? Um, this is how, <laughs> the, how, how I did it unofficially is you, you check the stops on you counting the cars. <laughs> well, I would check the properties on that road. So if you look down Dry Pine Bay, I don't know how many properties are on that road, but Dry Pine Bay, Whippoorwill, there's got to be about 100 properties. Oh, that. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> So it was, we'll say 150 properties. Well, if the average person has one car from their property, they go in and out, that's at least 300 cars a day. So that's that's kind of like how I judge it more or less. There could be more than two cars in a household. There could be one car, there could be no cars in a household. So I kind of try to take the average of that. <coughs> yeah, I guess that's the best again, guess for no. It's I a best guess, that. yeah. I saw a traffic counting cable on the end of Dry Pine Bay Road just a week or so ago. Yes. Was that, was that ours or was that uh, MTO? MTO, yeah. We, we don't own any of those. So that was I right asked the MTO what they were doing. They were just, they were just getting regular traffic counts. Um, based off those numbers, you could actually, if we have a, a huge number of people coming in and out of Dry Pine Bay, they might want to put a street light there or something or a traffic light. It all depends on what those numbers are. They have their, their books and their regulations. Do you, do you have access to those numbers, Martin? I could probably ask for them, see what happens. Yeah. Although we do have that sign, right? That sign is counting uh, the cars on the, or is it just counting yeah. the ones that are speeding? Oh, yeah. Actually, on that topic, that's the other thing why I don't really like that system was we put it at the, sh at the straights. So like we know people are speeding there, so I'm going to put it there, but it's halfway down the road. So we're missing all the cars that turn off right before it. So we don't have an accurate traffic count of that road because we're missing some of them. You're talking about the one on Dry Pine Bay Road? Yes. Well, if you're coming in on Dry Pine Bay Road, there's only two places anybody turns off and there's not much of that. Yes. It's, it's, so, it's catching 95% of the traffic on the road. Yeah, so that's that's a bad example, but we'll say I put it on uh, the other side of Whippoorwill on Dry Pine Bay, and then oh, half yeah. the traffic goes on Whippoorwill. I would be missing all of that traffic. That's right. That's that's what I'm trying to get to. So it depends on the road, depends on the area. Mm -hmm. But so you do get a traffic. But you do get a traffic count from that sign. Yes. 
And do you, do you have that data with? I do not currently have that data. I tried to get it last time I was there, and for whatever reason, it did not um, it did not download properly. So I'll have to go back. Okay, I'd just be curious to see how close it is to your your estimation on an average. Oh, yeah. How many cars a day? Yeah. Yeah. I do. I know. I do have the report. Um, I have the first. I think the the first meeting we had, I had the report done for that, and I had a week's worth of data. I can just pull that up real quick. I like to see how many vehicles actually per day. There we go. Let me share this. What if I can get better data? Seventy eight charts. Statistics, no charts. Is this per day? No, that's a week. This week. Right? Oh, this is my total. Okay, so uh, okay, we got one week here, and I got what's this? Say four fifty. Ah, uh, I mean, I'm just gonna say seven hundred for the fun of it. So eleven hundred and fifty cars divided by was that eight days? Yeah. Is just over a hundred cars a day. So one hundred and fifty cars ish. Huh? Gives you a good idea. Again, this was also this is also in June, so summer traffic is way different than early June. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there here. There's all the so, seventy-eight kilometers an hour. A little fast for that little stretch. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Let's see. Who has the uh, who has the record here? Eighty-two. 82. Well, it was probably Dean. Could have been. You got the record, I've, Dean. I've been driving this road a long time. <laughs> all right. Well, that's, uh, that's all the info I have. First started driving this road and with a team of horses. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know if you're joking or not. I'm not. He's not. <laughs> that, was, that was how we did it in winter time. There were no open roads. Well, does anybody have anything else to add to the discussion? I'm gonna flip through my screens here. Make sure nobody's got their hands up. No. Okay. So I'm gonna get a resolution to adjourn. And get a mover. I get a mover to adjourn. Dean. Yeah. And a seconder. Brad. Brad. All in favor? All right. This meeting is adjourned. Have a good night, everybody. Thanks. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Good night.